Good morning. We can be happy here. Come on. So I'm a little bit confused because uh, before I came up here, Tom said, hey, John, I'm going to go up on stage and, and tell a joke. And then he came up and introduced me. I don't understand. <laughs> Just kidding, Tom. Actually, uh, we're very happy to be here, very happy to be working with, with uh, Cyprus. Uh, we've known Tom and Marsha for a number of years. And as Tom had mentioned in the introduction, um, We've worked with them on, in a couple different fronts. One, from a benefit brokerage standpoint, and they've done an exceptional job. Quick shout out to Amy and her crew out there in uh, the Northwest. They did a great job with us. Um, but we've also now worked with them on the host care side for, the, for this program. And they've become trusted advisors. Matter of fact, this morning um, I was talking to Tom, and he said, hey, John, I want to give you a little bit of advice. He said, when you go up there this morning and start talking, don't be too charming, too witty, or too intelligent. Just be yourself. <laughs> Thanks for that advice. Yeah. So we're, as Tom said, we're, we're a domestic medical travel company. Uh, we work with self-funded plans, especially in the TPA space. Um, show of hands, how many people are tired of exorbitant bill charge coming into their plans? and are, are fed up with paying those. That's, as Tom mentioned, that's where we were. From a, ben a benefits brokerage perspective, we got tired of seeing these things. We got tired of hitting our heads against the wall and trying to figure out what are we gonna do about these things. And so we were looking for different solutions. And in trying to help manage our block of business to try to come up with better solutions, we developed host care resources with others. Um, what I would say about w what our ultimate goal is, is we're looking for the best outcomes. And, and the best outcomes really takes three different uh, uh, factors. One is best outcomes as far as quality, because we, we, we tend to spend a lot of time talking about medical travel related to the co tremendous cost uh, differential. But we need to make sure that we're also talking about the quality aspect because um, your employee who goes out to get medical services that uses a PPO list is not necessarily looking at it from a quality standpoint. They're just looking at a list. And, and many times what, when we're grabbing a hold of a potential travel patient and we start looking at the quality of the facility that they were going to at the exorbitant cost, and compare that to the higher quality facilities at a much lower negotiated rate, uh, that is a big difference. So we're looking at quality, we're looking at better outcome as far as cost, and we're also looking for a better outcome for the total experience. And, and that's where Shauna's gonna talk a lot more about the, the total experience, the hand-holding, the caring aspect of helping somebody through this, this process. We think that that's an important thing not only for the overall experience and happiness of the participant, but also to achieve better results with these kinds of programs. So I'd like to start out, you know, one of the common questions that we get is, what types of procedures are we really looking at for, for domestic medical travel? I can tell you one of the no-brainers is orthopedics. Whether that's knee, hip replacement, joint, uh, spinal surgeries, um, those are the most prevalent as far as destinations, but also the most common that come through that qualify for medical travel. Um, but we don't stop there. Uh, uh, general surgeries, hernia repairs, sinus surgeries, um, gynecological surgeries or procedures, hysterectomies, hysteroscopies. Um, really, the list is very large. These are some of the more common ones. But, uh, but any, any situation could potentially qualify. It, we just have to vet it out and make sure. So what are the real opportunities here? Like I said, high quality facilities. One of the things that we do when we're looking at who we're going to partner with for facilities, where we're gonna potentially try to send patients is look at uh, their quality data we actually go out and visit the, the locations. We take tours, we meet with the people, we meet with the doctors, we, we look at the, the area around it. What's the total experience gonna be like 
for that patient when they come in. We want to make sure that that's going to be a good experience for them and that they're going to be treated the right way. And that's a very important step to make sure that we're not just sending somebody to a lo location because they've got a low cost. Um, later this afternoon, you're going to hear from Novo, uh, Kurt Kubiak. That is one of the, the best facilities we've been to. They're up in, in Appleton, uh, orthopedics and others now. Um, beautiful facility and very, very high quality. Um, I would suggest that you talk with him. Uh, he's going to be talking about direct contracting. And direct contracting is good for providers in your local area, but what we're talking about is for those procedures that are not um, in your local area, where the, the best provider is not in your local area, that how do we get those people to get out of their comfort zone and actually travel to a different facility outside the area? Low global rates, whether that's a facility that already has transparent rates that have been calculated or a facility where we go in and negotiate those rates. We have facilities around the country that we already utilize, but as we work, start working with the group and we see maybe a, a concentration of employees in a certain area, we're, we're reaching out in that area and we're looking for facilities that might qualify as a, as a qualified partner. If the patient qualifies, and there's a number of things that, that go into qualification, and Sean's gonna talk about that more, then uh, the, the patient would travel for free, they'd get a free procedure, most of our plans also add um, additional incentives. And one of the things about getting somebody started in the process of looking at medical travel and is this right for them, is that the beginning step after, after we educate them, we're actually helping to grab their clinical information, their scans and such, and sending it out for free secondary opinions. So we've had a lot of patients that have come back to us saying, we really wanted to try to get a, a secondary opinion, but we didn't want to spend the time, the effort, we didn't know how to go about it, and they were very thrilled to have another set of eyes looking at this to make sure that they're getting the right procedure. And we've even had uh, situations where somebody was scheduled, well, we had one, it was a uh, rotator cuff repair, they were scheduled for the procedure, we sent the, the files out and the opinions came back there is no tear to the rotator cuff. There's no need for a surgery here. We just need some, some uh, PT, right? And they were scheduled for a $35,000 surgery to go under the knife for something that didn't even need to be done. So, so we can look at that too as far as the, the uh, secondary opinions. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Shauna to talk about how we go about doing this. So a show of hands, as employers and as brokers, the last, let's just say six months, who has, ever, who has experienced an opportunity where you opened up that invoice for that particular plan and your mouth just dropped when you saw what the billed charges were for that particular procedure? Have you been there? Have you seen that opportunity where you just thought, I really wish that somebody had gotten out in front of and be able to present a better option to this individual versus going to that particular facility. And you see it time and time again in that particular market, potentially. Um, you know, I was talking with Matt last night at dinner, and um, he knows his market. He knows that in his market, spine surgeries, that is an issue in that particular market. Wouldn't it be great to be able to get in front of those members in that particular market, somebody reaching out to them and ensuring that they have options that's the problem in some of the markets. The individual doesn't realize that they actually have options. Travel is an option, and it can be from anywhere, any state, to a surgeon in a facility that far exceeds what they would even have envisioned that they could have experienced. So when we first looked at host care and the development of it, there was a need to be able to put the travel piece in place. So we started with that. We looked at where are the facilities that we want to have these people go to? What are some good options for them? What does the, the travel look like? How can we make this a great experience for them? So we looked at the details of the hotel, obviously the, the you know, airline. We looked at all those kinds of details. But we realized as we stepped back, there was a lot of additional things that needed to be put into place. Some of those things included educating, educating the members. 
we really felt that there's a need here to educate members on what self-funded is. We would agree that a lot of the members that are in these plans may not grasp what self-funding is. And so the opportunity to have somebody reach out to them and actually talk to them about their actual specific medical plan, specifically what is their deductible. So again, educating the individual on a very personal call when the time is needed. So again, looking back at the model, we said, OK, how do we do that? Yes, we can put it in. They talk about it at orientation. They talk about it at renewal. So there's that opportunity to educate the person. But sometimes, unless they actually need the surgery right then and there, they're not really tuned in exactly onto what it is. So it's kind of one of those things that unless it's relevant, you kind of take it in and then you kind of you know, let it go away. But the idea of continuing to put it in front of the person year after year, continuing to have testimonies come back into the workplace, those are the types of things that we found have really been beneficial. In addition to that, we also have additional relationships that we decided, again, we needed to create. And that is with potentially the medical advocate. If you have a service already in place, uh, navigator type system, medical concierge. Uh, we work with Akiso as an example in a number of our groups where the individual is calling into them and talking to them about their medical needs. And here's an opportunity also that you may want to consider is medical travel. Did you realize that that was part of your medical plan? So there's another opportunity to be able to present this to the individual and make them aware that this is an added benefit to their plan. In addition to that, now we have somebody who went in to uh, have their knee pain assessed. Next thing you know, they're having an MRI. Find out shortly after that, they're going to need to have some type of surgery. They've met with that doctor, scheduled it possibly before they even left the building to have that procedure sometime in the next month, let's just say, because they like to schedule those things rather quickly, correct? What happens then? The individual, maybe they didn't think about host care being a part of the medical plan. A relationship, though, again, with the pre-cert company for that particular group, there's, again, a relationship there where they have that information come in and they notify us. Now, you may think, well, that person already has that scheduled. Are they really interested in changing their direction? We can tell you that we, we contact them and talk to them about this medical travel offer and what it includes, they absolutely are very interested to consider what their options are. They didn't even realize they maybe even had an option to consider to have that surgery done elsewhere. Again, getting that second opinion and those types of things. So again, we just kind of step back. It's not just the travel piece that host care focuses on. It's all the relationships before you even get to that. It's going through a qualifying process. What do I mean by qualifying? The qualifying in, ensures that this particular individual, their surgery qualifies financially. It has to make sense. It has to make sense for the plan. And what that means is that in that market, for that particular surgery, what kind of, what kind of cost assessment is being put in um, you know, estimates are coming out from that particular local hospital and that surgeon. We're finding that out. Again, we talk about some of the higher cost facilities yesterday with Adam, and we were you know, naming some of these Mayo and some of these what we would consider to be the higher cost. We have found that some of those higher cost facilities are actually in those small town rural communities. Anybody else experience that? So what we're experiencing then is that we look at what that estimated cost will be. We continue to look at where we feel like that person could actually possibly go to have that procedure. We look at travel costs. We look at the host care piece. We look at all of that together. And we immediately know this is a no-brainer. This is going to be a 20 plus thousand savings, specifically for that particular case. So up front, going into it, we know that each case, if it qualifies financially. Then we look at, does this particular individual qualify medically, of course, because we want to make sure that they can actually travel for this procedure. Is this safe for them to travel for? Again, with our experience, we know what type of surgeries qualify, but that particular individual has their own medical history, 
So we actually go through the steps to ensure that they actually qualify medically as well. So that's the qualifying process, and we present that to the individual. Again, this is just an option. If you'd like to go ahead and continue with this, um, let's go ahead and determine if you actually do qualify. So that's point two, is helping them collect their scans and their medical history. We feel as though recruiting them and having them a part of this process actually, again, keeps them part of the decision maker. They are the decision maker in this option. From there, we go back to that particular plan and we say, this is, this is the scenario. This is what we see. It is amazing how quickly our emails get answered when we send over a case and we say, this is the scenario and we're gonna see about a $45,000 savings. They quickly respond, call them today. Get this offer out there. Please let them know that this is a truly you know, great offer through the plan. So that's happening very quickly. Our surgeons that we work with, they recognize they would not have gotten that patient from Ohio unless we have actually presented it to them. So they are very quick to find times in their schedules, opening up surgery times. We say, you know, this person already had this surgery scheduled for spring break because they're a teacher. They somehow, some way, find that opening to be able to accept that case. So again, we're not talking about a medical travel case that you're going to have to wait six months to schedule. Sometimes it's as quickly as just a week and a half to two weeks, if that is in fact what the individual wants to continue, if they've already had that surgery scheduled, they already had child care lined up for their family, they had, you know, those kinds of things already in the schedule, vacation time. Um, although, of course, you have other individuals who say, you know, I'd rather just go ahead and, you know, take a little bit of time and think about this option. That's exactly what it is. It's just an option. So we let the individual think about it. Why don't you give us a call back? Or we'll follow up with you in a few days if you'd like. Again, keeping them, they are the decision maker, and we always like to present this as just an added benefit. There's no pressure. It's completely voluntary. And they actually look at it as, it's unbelievable to me that, I, you know, five minutes ago, I didn't even realize that this whole surgery that I was going to have, that was going to put our family in, in a financial pinch, is now actually going to be potentially giving us added income into the family. When it comes to the actual packages that we put into place, they are specific to that particular individual. So we are talking with the individual about where they're traveling from, where they're traveling to. We're looking at every opportunity to make that as smooth as possible. So if they're going into a very busy, large airport, and they're going to be leaving their car at the airport anyway, obviously we all know airport parking, you know, it's not very, um, you know, cost effective. So what we're looking at is a chauffeur driver possibly picking them up and driving them to the airport. They're wowed because they just got picked up in their driveway, and the plan is saving money because actually that's going to be cheaper than leaving a car. So there's a lot of added things that we're doing, again, just to make sure that this whole experience comes together. Again, accommodating their needs, giving them an, a, a, a Visa gift card before they even travel. That Visa gift card has loaded on it $100 a day. Each day that they're away from home, they have a meal allowance. So they're not having to incur that added expense of being away from home. Uh, potentially, if they're like some of our clients who say, I can use that any way I want. I said, if you want to go to McDonald's, you can go to McDonald's and go home with that money. If you're a steak food, you know, seafood, high-end restaurant, then you choose to use it that way. It is their money to use. And they like, again, that that has been something that they're empowered to make those decisions. We also offer a very detailed itinerary for each individual. It's tailored to their specific travels. It includes their doctor's appointments, driving directions, every detail that we could put into this to be able to truly make this um, seamless for them. For those that like paper, a hard copy is provided to them that we send to them. We also have electronic, an app that we actually provide to them if there's somebody who prefers to have that travel itinerary available to them through their phones. 
So again, trying to tailor it to that particular um, experience. Through their travels, we ensure that that individual has access to us 24-7. So they are already texting with us before they've even left, possibly if they're traveling by plane, which a lot of our clients don't, by the way. I just want to mention, a lot of them actually are just a, a, a little bit of a drive, potentially hour and a half, two hours this direction versus a half hour going the other direction to a different hospital. So I just want to make mention of that. But let's just say by chance it is an airline travel situation. Then in that scenario, we're texting with them, saying, hey, it looks like your flights are all running on time this morning. I had that this morning at 4 AM. Um, there was an individual um, that, again, host care, one of our reps was taking care of. And she ensured that she wanted to follow that person through their travel experience. So she's texting with them. And they're texting back. They're blown away that somebody's giving them that kind of level of care. And then through that process, they're ensuring that they're with them. Um, fully you know, watching out for them through that travel. All of the travel expenses, the hotel, the car rental, the airline, all of those expenses are coming directly to host care. So again, that upfront cost, they're not experiencing it. We collect all of the invoices, and we process it on the backside through the processing system when we ultimately submit it to Cyprus. And they have, again, with their forward thinking and flexibility, They've been able to allow us to be able to do things um, when it comes to customizing that for our particular groups. They're very open to uh, figuring out the best way to put that into place. So hats off to you guys for, you know, again, forward thinking and saying, you know what, that may not be the way we've always done it, but that's actually exciting, that this is something that we can actually adapt our system and our processes to be able to make this run smoothly. Medical bills. After you actually have a surgery, does it seem like those medical bills just do not stop coming? <laughs> it seems like you go to the mailbox, and yet there's another medical bill showing up in that mailbox. The beauty of these global rates and the, the bundled rate that we've set in place is that that is one invoice, and it's coming to host care. We've set that agreement up in place. We know exactly what the cost is for that particular procedure, for that bundled. It's coming to us. That individual is not getting medical bills for that particular surgery in the mail to them. It's all being, again, fed through us, processed on through the TPA, and then ultimately through the plan. In addition, cash incentives. Currently, all the groups that we work with, they see the opportunity here. They absolutely get it when it comes to, we have a spine fusion. You are going to save our plan over $100,000. What can I do to get that person to take this option? Granted, a great surgeon, a great facility, all the travel costs, you know, again, all those included. But then in addition to that, the idea that they also get a cash incentive that is, again, provided to them through the plan, they are in all of their employers. This is truly an added benefit. And they, again, when we present this to them, I can tell you, we get a lot of skepticism at first. They're saying, this sounds all too good to be true. So we continue to add testimonies to our website because we said, we understand. If we put more testimonies out there, you'll see that this is not uncommon reaction. Um, but definitely, it is something that um, it's a win-win I normally don't like to use, was that cliches? Um, but that definitely is um, a cliche. It could be considered a cliche. All right, moving on. Back at our table, we actually have a printout of just a sampling of 2015, some of the cases that came through. This is just two of them that we pulled from that uh, for the sake of time. <laughs> I'm going to go through them quickly. But I would love to be able, John and I would love to be able to talk with you at our booth after the fact if you'd like to get into more detail. We have a hip replacement. Uh, we're estimating the original facility cost at $80,000, although I understand if you're in Alaska, $80,000 actually is a deal, which is a little sad. <laughs> but looking at this, the participant's cost would have been $3,500. All in, that individual received a free surgery, so they did not have to pay their $3,500. 
they actually received a $5,000 cash incentive. That medical travel option total was $35,000, plan savings over $64,000. This next case, if you get John and I talking about it, we probably will talk your leg off. We love this next case because there's just so many things about it. Um, this individual ultimately was being diagnosed for the wrong surgery. Looking at the, the results here, $1,350 ahead. In addition to that, I have to add, he was in so much pain before he actually had the surgery. He had his surgery September 12th, I won't forget, because it's our son's birthday. The following spring, he was on the golf course. He is a walking testimony in that employer group that this is truly a great option. Just to wrap it up, host care, our pricing structure, 25% of the low global surgical rate. Again, that is the surgery cost of what has been negotiated, that low global rate. With a cap of 10,000, there is no uh, PEPM or upfront, there's no implementation. Truly, it takes us less than a half an hour to implement a new group. We're not gonna charge you for that half hour. <laughs> We're just excited to be able to get that into place. And again, it is not a percentage of discount or of savings. I'd like to just conclude that if you think that you have a group that potentially may not be open to travel, I would ask that you reconsider because a very small group can truly see great impacts from this as well as a, a very large group and anything in between. And we would love to be able to talk to you about that group, especially if they are a mature group. There's a lot of orthopedic opportunities there. Uh, so definitely come see us. And thank you very much for your time.